understanding the mechanics of a rotating tower. Rotating towers play a crucial role in the applications of amateur radio. In this discussion, we will first explore the mechanics behind a rotating tower, how it's constructed, the key components involved, and the engineering principles that make rotation smooth and reliable. At the end of the presentation, I will discuss the advantage of a rotating tower, highlighting how it improves performance and efficiency in real-world application, as I did in the ARRL DX. We will get on the air for a few moments and show you how this all works. Understand the mechanics. We will then examine why tower rotation is necessary and the advantage it provides, whether it's for RF gain, better signal uh, ratio, or operational flexibility. The ability to rotate a tower is essential for many reasons. Begin by diving into the construction and mechanics of a rotating tower. In the construction of any tower, you're going to need a rebar cage. Obviously, you're going to have to have concrete poured and the rotating base lifted onto the concrete and bolted. In tower work, uh, the most important thing is preparation. So here we are. We have the tower already built, uh, ready to be lifted in two picks with the crane. And the crane will lift this tower section right into place. And here it is. We've got the first 120 feet already up on the base. And this is the last 60 feet being lifted to the man on the tower. And there it is going right into place with all four rings. Those are the bearings on the tower. Now that the tower's up, let me show you a few uh, items that you need. You need a rotor controller. This is the uh, Green Her Heron RT21 uh, K0XG systems. And uh, this is what rotates the tower. We do this remotely. This is the relay board. This does the ramp up and the ramp down. You don't need this, but I highly recommend it. it takes less torque off the tower. Uh, limit switches are very important. You don't want over rotation of the rotating tower because you'll just rip the coax. Moving on, this is the motor. And uh, this is what uh, actually uh, turns the tower with the gearbox. This is the uh, tower on the base. You'll see the uh, bolts into the concrete. This is what this tower looks like today. It's 180 feet, has 96 elements, four tri-bander, 16 elements, a four element 40, and a seven over seven over seven over seven on six meters, all sitting on a peninsula on the coast of Maine. Now let's see this thing rotate in action. I'm gonna show you the mechanics of the rotating tower. So up here is the controller. It's at 45 degrees. I'm gonna turn it to 180. And there it is, it's gonna start turning. This relay board up here, just clicked, that's connected to it. Bring you outside here. And here it's rotating. Okay, it's rotating. This is a big gearbox in here with gears. And uh, it's chain driven. Here's the motor underneath here. And the thing is just turning, okay? You see the gear turning here? And up there, the whole tower is rotating. Let me come out further. Let me walk out here and explain how the rings work. So up there, there's a ring. I'll zoom into it. The ring sits on the outside of the tower. They're bearings. They're like rollers. The tower sits on the inside of that. The guy wires don't move, but the tower's moving on the inside of the ring setup. 
That's how that all works. And you could see the whole antenna system just turning. All 96 elements and it just stopped. That's how it works. Let's see how this system performs. Here I am operating in the ARRLDX for a few moments. All right, let's go play in the ARRLDX. I'm on 10 meters. Let's roll. CQ contest, Whiskey 2 Radio Echo. Whiskey 2 Radio Echo contest. OK1, Victor Kilo, 5-9 Mike Echo. 5-9 Kilo. Got four, Charlie Lima Yankee, 5 9 Mike Echo. Okay, got four, Papa Lima Yankee, thank you, 5 9 Mike Echo. Thank you, Whiskey 2 Radio Echo, contest. Papa Delta 3 Whiskey. Papa Delta 3 Whiskey, 5 9 Mike Echo. Thank you for Mike Echo, you're 5 9 100. Thank you, Whiskey 2 Radio Echo, contest. Oscar Juliet, Oscar Juliet. Delta Juliet 1, Oscar Juliet. Delta Juliet 1, Oscar Juliet. 5-9 Mike Echo. 5-9-100. Thank you, Whiskey 2, Radio Echo. Sierra 5-3, Victoria. Sugar 5-3, Victor. 5-9 Mike Echo. Thank you, 5-9-1-2. Thank you, Whiskey 2, Radio Echo. Contest. Wasn't that really cool? In action. I was actually remote physically sitting in New York and the transmitter is in Jonesport, Maine on that 180 foot rotating tower. The very important thing I should mention about a rotating tower is when you have your antennas stacked, you have gain in all directions where as a traditional contest station would have a bunch of antennas on a tower fixed in different directions or on tick rings. That's very, very expensive. If you're not a contester and you're looking to put up one tower and uh, you're going to be chasing DX and you plan to put up a tower higher than 120 feet, I highly recommend that you rotate because the cost factor is not really that different between putting in a 22-foot chromoly mast, a, a rotor today is going to cost you 2500 with a controller. Then you have to have the guy brackets. You need a, a top plate, which today is like 400 bucks. That's the bearing plate. Then you're going to need a thrust bearing. So when you figure out the cost factor, rotating is going to be better, and you're going to have gain in all directions with stacks. Today, the tri-banders are high performance. They're almost as good as monobanders. So if you get an OptiBeam or a GXP 16-3, you're going you're gonna to have monoband performance. And if you have two or three of those in stack, you've already uh, upped the game. I hope you enjoyed the presentation of why you should rotate a tower. Be free to ask me any questions. Uh, send me an email. I'll be happy to respond. Additionally, if this was educational to you, uh, please consider subscribing to our channel, Ham Radio 24-7. And we have other videos that may be of interest. Check these out. Thank you very much.